Amen. Okay, let's, we're going to be touching a number of scriptures, but just um, uh, let's go to our foundational scripture will be in the book of Haggai 2, verses 9, and Romans 8, verses 8. Let's just read those two this morning, then we will continue from there. We are reading from the book of Haggai 2, verse 9. It says, the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. Hey. And in this place, I will grant you peace, hey. declares the Lord hey. Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 16. I consider that our 16. present sufferings are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. In us. And this is the word of the Lord and the church say amen. amen. This morning I would like to speak to us. I think I did a, a, a message on the glory of God and I didn't finish it. I'm going to do a part of that message. I'm just going to go straight into the sub, uh, subtopics a subtopic under that subject, but we are still in the uh, topic and the subject of the glory. Amen? So, but this morning, I would like us to look at the journey of the anointing. The journey of the anointing. Somebody tell your neighbor and say the journey of the anointing. You see, when we are going to grow in the things of God, God takes us through a journey. Are we together? When we are going to grow spiritually, God takes us through a journey of preparing us and pruning us so that uh, the best will come out of us. So this morning, I would like us to go through that so we can see what is it that the Word of God teaches us. Are you ready? Right. Now, the journey of the anointing, allow me to say to you this morning, I would like us to look at three phases that the journey of the anointing takes you through. Three phases that the journey of the anointing takes you through. How many? Three. It might be more, depends on what the Lord is revealing to other people and what, is, what, is, what are the findings that they are getting from the word of God as we are looking at scripture. But for me, I would like us to look at just these three. Amen. Now, the first phase that you go through as you are growing spiritually in the things of God is that the first, pla the first place that you would find yourself is in a phase where you feel or you, fe you, 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 you find yourself, I'll call it a phase where I say you will find yourself in Gilgal. In Gilgal. Are we together? What is Gilgal? Let's go to the book of Joshua 5, verses 2 to 8. The Bible there talks about um, the, uh, when, 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 it, when there was a nation that was going to fight over with Joshua and the Jews... Uh, um, uh, force them that if they are going to have relations with them and if they are going to uh, engage with them, they are forcing them to go through circumcision. Now you must understand, um, no, 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 I think this was the time when God actually was telling Joshua that he should take the man so that they will go to, to circumcision for the second time. Um, remember that with the Jewish law, already for a boy child had to go through circumcision in a period of eight days. I was still together. But again, God, because he wanted to, um, to reinforce the relationship he has with them, and he forced them, he told Joshua, I want you to take the man again for the second time to circumcision. Are we together? You can understand the pain that these men had to go through. They are being circumcised for the second time. They are going through pain that they have overcame and they have already qualified for, if you, would, if you were to put it like that. 
They are already men. They are already recognized as the men. They already have a covenant with God. They have already met the standard of God's requirement. But again, God is taking them through a process where he wants them to be circumcised for the second time. In, so in Gilgal, this is what happens to us. In Gilgal, it's a place where we are marked. In Gilgal, it's a place where God takes ownership of us. In Gilgal, it's a place where we are going through what we are going through, but it is there in order for it to, to, to fulfill a divine purpose in our lives. Are we together in this house? It's a painful process. It's one of the things you would not want to choose, but you would find yourself that you are going through just a phase. You are going through just a season. And this is where God wants to put a mark of himself over your life. Are we together in this house? God wants to give you a new testimony. God wants to bring you to a place where you have an encounter with him at a different level. God is taking you through a phase where you are thinking, oh, but I went through the same thing. How can I go through the same thing again? Are we still together in this house? I thought I had victory in this area. Why all of a sudden I'm fighting? Myself going through almost the same thing again. I thought that I've overcame this weakness. I thought that I had control over this challenge. I thought that I had uh, uh, control and I've managed this frustration. I cannot believe God is expecting me to go through the same thing for the second time. Are we together in this house? Now this journey is not there to kill us. But this journey is there in order for God to take us to a place of ownership. Where God wants to put a mark of himself to us. Where his principles needed to be reinforced into our lives and reinforced into our spirit. Are we together in this house? Where the Holy Spirit wants to seal us in our faith and in our relationship with him. Are we together in this house? You might be here this morning and you might find yourself that you are going through a similar thing you went through last year. You are finding yourself that you are going through a similar challenge that you have been through last month. You might find yourself that maybe every time in the year you're finding yourself that you are going through almost a similar thing. Are we together in this house? Now understand that that journey you are in, its purpose is for it, for God to manifest himself. Are we together in this house? You are in Gilgal. You are in a place of circumcision. You are in Gilgal. You are in a journey of the anointing. You are in Gilgal. You are in a pruning process. You are in Gilgal. Nothing is nice and nothing is good and nothing makes sense. Are we together in this house? Nothing seems to be working out. Nothing seems to be making sense. Nobody seems to be understanding what you are going through. Nothing gets into your spirit and goes through into your heart. When you are in Gilgal, you will find yourself that even the preachers at church, they are not hitting, they are not scratching where it is itching. Are we together in this house? You are listening to the word of God, but it doesn't touch. It, 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 it. Nobody is nailing it on the head for you. Are we together in this house? Even the prophets, when they speak, they are not hitting it where you really need it to go to. Are we together in this house? You are in Gilgal. You, you don't have to blame anybody. You don't have to be bitter against anybody. You don't have to be angry with the preachers. You don't have to be angry with God. You are in a phase of the anointing. You are in a journey that those that are anointed by God and those that are going to be anointed by God, they go through the same phase. It's, it's, it's circumcision. It's a place of pain. It's a place of circumcision. 
It's a double pain, something you have gone through, but you are going through it again. It has a purpose in order for the anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life to go through another measure where you are going to go deeper in the grace of God for your life. Are we together in this house? Am I making sense in this house? God wants to own you at a different level. God wants to take ownership over your life at a different level. God wants to give you a testimony at a higher level. God wants to bring you a place where you get to know him at a different level. Are we together in this house? You are in Gilgal. Tell your neighbor and say Gilgal. You are in Gilgal, my neighbor. I want to hear you church say you are in Gilgal, you are in Gilgal. Hang in there, hang in there. You are in Gilgal, you are in a journey of the anointing. Oh, you are going deeper with God. You are going deeper in the faith. You are going deeper in the revelation. You are going deeper in the word of God. You are going deeper in understanding the things of the spirit. You are going to have an encounter with God at a different level altogether. You are in Gilgal, my neighbor. Tell your neighbor, hold the hand of your neighbor and say you are in Gilgal. You are in Gilgal. Phase number two. Phase number two is Adulam. Phase number two is Adulam. Tell your neighbor and say Adulam. Say it louder and say Adulam. Adulam is a place of isolation. Adulam is a place of aloneness. You are not alone, but you are in a place of aloneness. There are people around you, there's family around you, there's colleagues around you, but you are feeling like you are in a place of aloneness. You are feeling like you are by yourself. You are feeling like you are, uh, you are going through things only by yourself. You no, nobody is understanding where you are and what is going through in your life. You are in isolation. You are in a place of despair. You are finding yourself in discouragement. You are finding yourself all of a sudden that you are hopeless. You are in Adulam. Are we together in this house? Now in Adulam, the Bible tells us in 1 Chronicles 12 verses 32 that this is what David went through. He was coming straight from another battle in Ziklag for fighting with the Amalekites. Then all of a sudden again, he finds himself with another of the enemies that are fighting him. At the same time, the king Saul was after his life. Nothing made sense to him. Nothing was stable with David and his life. At this time, everything was, was going haywire. The whole hell broke loose. David was in despair. David was discouraged. David was in a place of hopelessness. David was in a place of isolation. He found himself that he was alone. There was people around him, but he felt that he was in a place where he was alone. In Adulam, it's a place where we are feeling that we know the word of God, we love Jesus, but we are feeling like we are by ourselves. Are we together in this house? We feel like we are in isolation. And at times we don't want to go to places where there's people around us. It's as if they will see the, 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 the cracks of our hearts. It's as if they will see right through us. Are we making, am I making sense in this house? It's as if they will want or they will need us to be bubble, bubbly as we are usually bubbly. And yet at this time, 
You are not feeling like you are wanting to be bubbly like the way that you used to. You don't feel like you want to talk to anybody. You don't feel like you want to connect with anybody. You don't feel like you have any energy to you. You don't feel like you have anything left in you for you to move forward. Are we together in this house? You are in Adulam. You are in a place of isolation. You are in a journey of the anointing. You are in a process of pruning. You are going to multiply. You are in a phase where you are going to increase and be fruitful. But you have to go through this phase first. And also at, when you are in Adulam, you also feel like you have lost everything. Are we together in this house? When you are in Adulam, you feel like uh, everything you have worked for is no longer there. You have, it feels like you are going to start your life from scratch. When you are in Adulam, it feels like you have lost all your investment. When you are in Adulam, it feels like everything you have built has collapsed and you have to start from scratch again. You have to build your family up again. You have to build your business again. You have to build your children's life again. You have to build everything that you have built. You are finding yourself having to start from scratch and building again. You are in Adulam. Tell your neighbor and say you are in Adulam. Hold the hand of your neighbor and say you are in Adulam. You are in a place of isolation. You are like David in the cage. You are like you have nobody. You are like you are by yourself. You have, you have feelings of despair. You have feelings of discouragement. Are we together in this house? Am I talking to some people in this house? Or is it the injection? Is it the injection this morning? The church is not talking to me this morning. Is it the injection? It's too strong. People are in Adulam. And some are in Gilgal. <laughs> if you have not been through that phase in your life with God it feels like God is too far even your prayers when you pray it feels like they are not even hitting the roof you are feeling like you are so alone nothing makes sense you are asking God Father where are you am I making sense you are in a journey of the anointing because God has a mighty and a wonderful purpose in your life. Am I making sense this morning? Let's go through phase number three. Phase number three. Let me kill you once so that we'll resurrect you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three phase that you go through, you're finding yourself that you are in Golgotha. You thought that Gilgal was there, you have been circumcised. You can't get up, you can't walk, you are in pain, you feel like you are defeated. And when you are in Gilgal, even the enemy can come and take things from you. You have no power to fight back. Are we together in this house? You have no power to defend yourself back. You have no energy for you to get up and do anything. Are we together in this house? Because it's a level of pain that leaves you to be vulnerable. When you are in Gilgal, you are left like that for you to recover. You need time. You need a space until everything else um, and all the muscles, they come back and they regenerate themselves again. It's a process. Are we together in this house? In Adulam, you are alone. You will only be helped by God when he sends people of your journey. When, when, when he sends people of your faith, when he sends to you people of your tribe, people of your language, people of your revelation, people of your faith, people of your journey, your destiny help us. People that know Adula, people that know discouragement, people that do not bombard you with verses because they have not been through where you are now. People that don't know your weakness, who have always been strong, that cannot identify themselves with you. Are we together in this house? You are in Adulam. That's a phase of Adulam. Now, when in Adulam, the Bible says, just to go a little bit, 
uh, the Bible says that David, uh, God sent to him the sons of Issachar. They came to David and they say, we are yours. Oh, David. He is alone in Adullam. But they came to him and they said, we are yours. Oh, David, we are yours. Oh, son of Jesse. Sons of Asakai that knew the times. I pray for you this morning that if you are in Adullam, that God will bring to you people of your journey. Your sons of Asaka, your helpers on the journey. The people that have been through where you are at. People that know this journey. People that have been through this phase. People that they can identify themselves with you. Are we together in this house? Now in Golgotha, we are in Golgotha. Tell your neighbor and say number three is Golgotha. In Golgotha, understand that when Jesus was uh, hanged on the cross, he was not hanged on the cross at the bottom of the city. But he was hanged on the cross. His cross was on top of the hill. On top of the hill. At the center base where everybody can see. Jesus was in shame and it was it had to be in a place where everybody will see that yeah you know what uh -huh. no more miracles now no more feeding of 5,000 now no more mighty works now no more uh, powerful teachings now no more glorious um, moments now Look at the Son of God where he is. He was on top of the mountain. He was in shame. He was in pain. And everybody got to see it. And on top of it all, on the cross also, he was stripped off naked. Everybody got to see how his body was ripped off. How he was beaten. And Isaiah tells us that he was formless. You could not, you could not identify uh, with his face of who he was. The before and the after could not be compared again. Because he was in a place where he was formless. He was so beaten. Jesus was so humiliated. I'm sure the kingdom of darkness at that time was celebrating. And thinking that everything is uh, well on their side. Are we together? Uh, in Golgotha is a phase where we are in hostile. In Golgotha, we are in a dangerous environment. We're finding ourselves that we are in a dangerous environment spiritually. Are we together in this house? We are in a place of shame. We are in a place of mockery. We are in a place where our mouths are shattered where we cannot defend our cause, where we cannot defend ourselves, where everything about us is in shame. Are we together in this house? Where everybody comes and they mock. And as some, they say, ah, you pray so much and such things are happening to you. Every Sunday you are at church, but look at your life. You don't even have anything to show that you are believing God. What is it about you and your salvation? You have been saved ever since. Are you still saved even until today? You are in a phase of Golgotha. You are in a place of shame and humiliation. And nothing seems to be working out. Tell your neighbor and say you are in Golgotha. Tell your neighbor and say you are in a place of shame, my neighbor. You are in a journey of the anointing. And anything at this time does not look like who God says you are. And people around you, some of them, they are leaving you. Some of them, you have helped them. Some of them, you have assisted them. Some of them have things today that actually they should be, uh, uh, they are, they, they should be crediting you for it. But it's a different phase altogether. Because nobody wants you. Nobody wants to associate themselves with you. Even the disciples of Jesus were running away from him. Even Peter, the one he loved, and the one he said he loves him, he was nowhere to be found. He betrayed him. And Judas also, you know, it was everything.
everything was upside down with Jesus and his church. His disciples were nowhere to be found. It was only Mary, the Mary who has no name in the community. The Mary that nobody will hear her because of her, her background and her history. That was the only person that was there with him together with his mother. Are we together in this house? It's a place of shame. It's a place of uh, hostility. It's an environment. It's a dangerous environment where you are so vulnerable. Oh my God. Have you ever been in a place spiritually that you, you are not even sure whether you are saved anymore or you are not? Whether God is accepting you or not? Whether even God knows you or whether your name is written in the book of life or maybe it's been removed? Am I talking this morning? Where you feel like, oh God, I feel like I'm backsliding. I feel like I'm finished, I'm done and it's all over me. I can't hear God, I can't wake up and pray. I have no connection of the word. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like testifying. I don't feel like inviting anybody. I'm in a place of isolation. I'm in a place of my own. Baby, you are in a journey of the anointing. Tell your neighbor and say it's a journey of the anointing. Oh, but I love the word of God. But I love the word of God. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 4, verses 8. I love the word of God. I just love the word of God. Are we together in this house? For the Bible says we are pressed on every side. Ay, ay, ay. On every side we are pressed. On every side sometimes we feel vulnerable. On every side, we find ourselves in Golgotha. On every side, sometimes we find ourselves in, in Gilgal and in Adulam, where we are by ourselves and nobody is there for us. We are pressed down on every side, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We might feel like it physically, but spiritually, it's not our position. Continue, continue, continue continue we are persecuted but we are not abandoned we are struck down but we are not destroyed we are a different people altogether you must not look at us from where we are today you must not look at us from where we were yesterday you must not look at us from where we were even last year we are a complex people we are a unique people we are a different breed and a different kind oh my god my god my god my god we cannot be destroyed. Listen, we are unkillable. We are untargetable. There's nothing you can do to us. We will find ourselves in Gilgal. We may find ourselves in Adulam. We may find ourselves with people leaving us. We may find ourselves losing things. We may find ourselves being confused. We may find ourselves having no identity. We may find ourselves in all kinds of frustrations and in all kinds of things. Sometimes we get sick. Sometimes we lose things. Sometimes we get detrenched. Sometimes we lose people. Sometimes we go through death. Sometimes we go through accusations. Sometimes Sometimes we go through hatred sometimes we go through jealousy people they tell us us they tell us our achievements they tell us our husband they tell us our children they tell us our families they tell us our cars they tell us our ministries everything about us but guess what we are unkillable we cannot be destroyed we are a different breed we are a royal priesthood Oh, we have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. We are the children of the Most High God. Whether you put us in shame at the top of the mountain, we rise up even there. Whether you put us anywhere and every, everywhere, we find ourselves jumping back into our position. We think that we are being destroyed. You think that it is the end of us. Listen, persecution does not kill us. Troubles does not finish us. Discouragement does not pin us down. We are an unstoppable people. We are a miracle. We are signs and we are wonders. We are the children of the Most High God. We are the prince and the princesses of heaven. Oh, the blood of Jesus is in us. We are born of God and therefore we overcome the world. Hey, 
we overcome the world we overcome the world we overcome the world we overcome all circumstances we overcome all challenges you might be here this morning and they have just they have just increased the prices of fuel they've increased it have increased it have increased it and everything is going high and the devil is thinking it's going to discourage us uh -uh, we are unkillable come whatever comes on our way we are an unstoppable people we cannot be finished we cannot be destroyed we cannot be persecuted we jump over all circumstances for through Christ Jesus we can do all things we can do all things through Christ Oh, who gives us strength. This strength does not come from our own intelligence. This strength does not come from our own experiences. It does not even come from our own education. Are we together in this house? This strength is divine. It comes from above. It's supernatural. Oh, hallelujah. It is the work that God does in us. And it does it through us. And it does it in our lives. Every single day, he is at work in us. Every single day, the glory of the Lord and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is continuously embedded in our spirit. Every single day, Jesus is doing a marvelous work in our lives. Tell your neighbor and say, Jesus is at work in you, my neighbor. Jesus is at work. Jesus is at work. Jesus is at work. My God, my God, my God. In Romans 8, where we have read in verses 18, the Bible tells us that the suffering of this time cannot be compared with the glory. Listen, the Gilgals and the Adulams and the Golgothas of this time cannot be compared. They are only there for us to pay a spiritual price because there is no addition. Spiritually, you cannot be promoted unless you pay the price. And suffering, pain, misery, not that I'm glorifying pain, not that I'm glorifying misery, not that I'm, going, I'm glorifying hardship, but unfortunately, it is a spiritual mess. If you want something spiritually, if you want to gain a muscle spiritually, you have to pay a price. If you want God to use you, if you want to do mighty works, there has to be a price you must be prepared to pay. Oh, hallelujah. There has to go through something that you have to go through as a child of God. Even when you are going to have a qualification, you must go through the mats, you must go through sleepless nights, you must go through tests, you must go through assignments, you must go through all those kind of things because you are wanting a qualification at the end of the day. Nothing is for Mahala. Tell your neighbor, nothing is for Mahala. Even in the anointing, there is nothing for Mahala, my baby. Nothing comes easy like that. If God were, were to crucify Jesus on the cross, how much more me and you? If God had to crucify his own son, who is God, perfect with no sin, how much more me and you? Are we together in this house? But I thank God that this morning, now I know better. <clears throat> this morning, now I know better that there is something different that God is busy adding in my life as I am going through what I am going through. Something that God is busy cooking in my spirit, a different level altogether, a higher level spiritually. I am paying a price for where God is taking me. Because God cannot use you like this. God cannot use you being an unprepared vessel. God had to, has to take you through certain things in order for you to earn a right to declare some things and to speak some things in the spirit. Are we together in this house? You cannot just jump forward and go and address certain spiritual levels. You have to go through some things in order for you to qualify to address a level spiritually. It doesn't just happen overnight. Are we together in this house? 
You have to go through what we have to go through. And now we know, according to the word of God, in Haggai 2, 9, we know better now, according to the word, that the glory of the former will be greater than the, than the glory of the, of the latter shall be greater than the former. Where I was yesterday, I am a different person today. After my Adulam and my Gilgal and my Golgotha and my Adulam, I am now a different person altogether. There is a spiritual addition that has happened in me. There is a promotion that has happened in me. I am a different woman altogether. I'm a different man altogether. I am a different young person altogether. I am different. I'm not the same as I was before the challenge. I am not the same as I was before the before the frustration and before the tests came on my side. I'm here to declare to you, child of God, according to the book of Isaiah 60 verses 1, that arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Arise and shine. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Arise and shine for the light has come over your life. You are not there to die in that situation, but instead God is going to multiply you. God is there to increase you. God is there to enlarge you. God is there to promote you. God is there to bring you to a higher place. After this, you are going to be a different person altogether. Are we together in this house this morning? If you are hearing this morning this word, shout a big, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. This morning I'm declaring over your life that you are going to shine as you are arising. You are going to shine and see the goodness of the Lord. You are not going to die, but you are going to live and declare God's goodness on this earth. You are going to share your testimony to those that were looking at you while you were in shame. While you were going through dangers and toil. While you were going through your tests. But those that were watching you, you are going to testify to them. They are going to be there when you tell them how God pulled you out. How God snatched you out. How God delivered you. How God set you free. How God broke the chains. How God took you out of that prison. I declare to you this morning that you are coming out of your prison. You are coming out of your shame. You are coming out of your cross. Oh, heaven is descending you down from the cross. You are being descended down this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever challenge, oh, whatever hostility, whatsoever suffocation that you have been through and maybe you are overdue, I am declaring you this morning. You are coming out. I'm speaking to you this prophetic word. You are coming out of it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, 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 ah. Hey. Oh my God. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. This morning, I'm seeing the Lord giving some people crowns, crowns, crowns on their heads, crowns on their heads. They are being given crowns, crowns. They are being rewarded. Heaven is saying, well done, well done, well done, well done. You hold on into the faith. You hang on into the faith. You hang on. You did not disappoint God. You did not change your testimony. You did not change your confession. You stood during the test of time. Hold on. Uh, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. You have hang on at the time where things were at your most. Your back was backward. You were bended so severely so. But you did not change your confession. You continued to hold on into the word of God. You continued in your confession of faith you hold on into the word even at times where everything else was against you but you stood the test of time and heaven this morning is giving you a crown ah my jesus yeah 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 heaven is saying well done well done well done well done well done heaven is saying arise and shine arise and shine 
Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. It's the day of rewards. 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 I'm seeing crowns. 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 I'm seeing crowns for the long suffering, for the faithfulness, even at times where things were hard, but you continued and you hold on. Even when your back was already, you have been whipped. It's been bloody, it's been messy, it's been shaking, it's been everything, but you hold on into the faith. Moses, well done. Heaven is saying, well done, well done for holding on there, for hanging in there. For hanging in there and still believing the word of God. Ah, my Jesus. It's the day of rewards. 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 There's a couple there. There's a couple there. Can you stand up, please? Can I pray for you? It's the day of rewards. It's the day of rewards. Hold your hands together. Hold your hands together. Heaven is saying, well done, well done, well done. For hanging in there, well done. For believing in the faith, holding on into the faith when everything else does not make sense. But you continued and you hold on into the word of God. It's the day of rewards. After today, receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's people who held on in the faith where everything else was falling apart. This morning, it's your day. It's your day. It's your day. Your day of visitation. Your day of visitation. Your day of visitation. It's a day of your divine promotion. God is taking you higher. God is taking you deeper. Thank you, Jesus. And receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The burdens are being removed in the service. Heavy burdens are being removed in the service. Heavy burdens are being removed in the service. Because some of you were on the cross. Some of you were in Adolam. And some of you were in Gilgal. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the anointing this morning for the next level. Receive the grace this morning for the next level. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the anointing for the next level. It's been tough. It's been hard. It's been texting. But this morning receive your reward receive your reward your reward from God thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit let's put our hands together and thank God